Hey guys, happy President's Day. How you doing? Never mind, that was a rhetorical question. Hey, yeah, I'm in that kind of mood because the background music is James T. Model Ford. Uh, we've heard about him before on my channel. You want to know who he is. You want to get one album, I think the one you're looking for is Pee Wee Get My Gun and Let Me In is the last song. You want to see that one. But welcome to my episode called Assembly Line. Now, I think you all know me well enough because, because I've preached about this before. I do not like mass-produced, cheap, uh, dime-a-dozen instruments, and I've spent my whole, is this a career? <laughs> That's using that term really loosely. But trying to make sure that the, that the instruments I build are unique, whether it's about the matchbooks on the neck or how the coil is mounted or what the coffee can looks like, but I put a lot of time into the graphics on my on my guitars. My cigar boxes show that as well. Now, um, if your stuff is really unique, sometimes it takes a little bit to get motivated for, you to, for, for it all to click. I mean, if you're just putting A, B, and C together, it gets pretty easy to do that. It gets become pretty monotonous. But if you're doing individual stuff, um, well, sometimes you can get hung up. And, and here's what I've discovered. Um, Darren Dukes, who helped me out uh, really early on, first with knacks and then and parts and that kind of stuff, and a lot of advice told me, if you're going to build one, more than one of these things, when it comes to parts, you want to buy as many as you can afford to keep the chip shipping and unit costs down. And then when you're building stuff, the stuff you can replicate, um, you want to do that too because you want to remember unless you've got a shop where each workstation is set up now my shop is kind of a mess as always but I've got a number of things I can do uh, at the drill press or the band so or things like that but again if unless your workshop is set up where you have workstations that you can just run right to something with no setup and cut a neck board or cut out a headstock or or fret press or something you want to remember that all the time that you're spending in setup and tear down between tasks is costing you so what i'm going to do today for you is i'm going to take this pile of wood um, there's some headstock wood in here there's some neck boards in here and there's some fret boards in here and i'm going to show you how to do a setup and just blow this stuff out where you you end up with neck blanks pretty quick and um that's really what this episode is about. It's about saving time, being efficient. And then when you've got these things, again, uh, my, necks, my necks are always 25 and a half scale. Uh, they always have this configuration, whether they're a cigar box or a, a license plate guitar or even a coffee can. There's some things I do a little bit different, but I, I know for sure that when I get an idea or I have to throw something together, if I've got three or four of these necks sitting around, then I'm much uh, uh, more capable of, of focusing on what I want to do to make these things individual. So that said, I'm going to do some layout on the bench. Now we're going to be using saws and machinery. I'm going to show you just how quick this can be if your setup is right. Don't forget, give me a like, give me a subscribe, and check out T Model 4 Pee Wee Get Your Gun. Let's hit the bench. All right, let's start talking about this mess over here. Um, you see these little wooden dowels I have here? You see the you see the color they are? You see how nicely that contrasts against the colors of wood we use? Well, what I do with these is I use them to pin uh, my scarf joints and neck boards together. Remember this? Um, now I want this contrast color, so in order for that to happen, I have to soak these. So these have been soaking in stain for a better part of a couple months. So I always got this stain jar over here. My secret concoction. You don't even want to know what's in there. But I've always got those soaking in there. So there's an example of how you can prep. But I almost forgot I need to get these out last night and start to dry them out. Because when I start gluing and putting things together, I certainly want these dry so they don't bleed. I also know, for example, what drill bit matches these so you have your drill bits marked or put in a place where you know where it is that way you just pick it out i know that's the drill bit 
I can just pull it out and stick it in there like that. Now you'll notice that I have a lot of templates. I've done episodes on templates. I got this template from Darren Dukes, Delta Groove Guitars a long time ago. He sent me this one. I use this one a ton for headstocks and mark and scarf joints. You're going to see me use this here in a minute. And then I've got a number of stuff like this one. I can figure out where I'm going to put my pegs. I just line this up like this. One mark there, one mark there. Slide this one up, one mark there. I drill my holes. I put my wooden peg in. I'm good to go. And then, of course, I've got my coffee can jigs. I think you've seen that before. How to line up the notches for the necks. How to line up the bolts on the coffee can. And then the specialty of all of them is the scarf joint jig, which we're going to be using here in a minute. Bottom line is... If you're going to repeat stuff and there's a way to do this simple, take advantage of that. All right, let me start separating the stuff. I got four finger boards here. They're 25 and a half scale. Now you always want to remember that when you get these finger boards, they're not always cut right there. You got to figure out where is that first fret or where is the knot going to be. But don't just assume that that's it. Um, I think I talked to you about an episode called fretting the neck or something like that anyway you always want to make sure that your 12th fret is halfway between uh 25 and a half and then the other half goes down to the bridge we won't get into that but let's set that aside now some longer neck boards when i when i purchase these i want to eyeball them make sure that they're not crooked and then um I don't ever make my necks more than 36 inches long total, including the headstock, because shipping becomes impossible. So I've got some of these longer and some of these shorter neck boards. So these typically work for the underboard while a long one gets me a neck or so. And then now we're down into this big board here is Tula Poplar. Uh, it's not poplar, it's not cottonwood, it's liriodendron, tulipifera is what it is. But this is the thicker board, wider board, that I'm going to use to make my headstock. Now some people like to glue these together like this and pin them this way or something. Um, putting wood glued together and then mysteriously it always seems where you need to put your tuner holes right where that is that's going to cause a split so anyway here's the material i'm going to use today and we're going to start off by working out some head stocks now i've peeled the plastic back a little bit i'm going to keep that on there if i don't use the whole thing but notice i got this piece of scrap wood here it comes in handy for me and and first thing i want you to notice is this template headstock template is 220 millimeters long don't you love that uh, it's about nine inches long people and so I need pieces of wood that are at least nine inches long I don't cut them right to nine because I'm, I really want to cut them to ten um, and that gives me a little bit of room to work you want to remember that from this point down is the scarf joint um, and so what I need to do now is I need to take a look at this piece of wood I got here. And I noticed that right up here, I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't see that. There's a there's a little crack up here at the top two inches of board. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that off. I don't want that. So I'm going to make my first mark there. And I'm going to lay out 10 foot spots down the way until I have four of these three four now what you're going to do you're going to see me do is I'm going to take these to the chop saw and I'm going to cut those four sections off and get rid of this see that little split there at the end I'm going to get rid of that make sure that's not there one two three four I'm going to cut those sections and then we're going to put on our scarf joint jig and we're going to cut these and I'm going to show you how quick it is to blow out four neck blanks with uh, the scarf joint cut.
Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of explaining here. I built this notch here so it would fit on this corner here and ride that smooth, okay? So everything is there. The blade comes down right at the edge of this, meaning that if you want the cut to be right, you gotta be just a little bit past that right there, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do is make sure everything's up against that fence right here. I'm gonna rotate this around this clamp here, making sure this is tight, that's tight. I'm gonna clamp that down so this is nice and sturdy. Now, if you don't have one of these, find another way to do it. Everybody does that, finds a way, but you're gonna put this piece of wood just past here. So there's gonna be a little bit of this sticking out over here. And then I've got this clamp that I can come in from under here and clamp that. To there now when I come down I'm gonna take my hand and pull this back and go like this and take this slow but I've got four neck boards here or four headstock boards that I'm gonna blow out and put the scarf joint on them really quick I think we did that in less than a minute and I have four headstock blanks don't worry about that little piece at the end that always happens but remember our headstock template we're gonna get rid of this anyway but I mean I could literally cut a hundred of these in an hour I'm sure so the bottom line is I had a, a six foot piece of tulip poplar I got four uh, headstock blanks out of it and I got half of it left so that'll go in there notice I keep the plastic on it and that way it keeps it nice now it's time to get in these neck boards I buy them in stock of four foot long uh, again I'm gonna end up with pieces out of this but it's uh, see just like this it's the same thing now I do like this I do like this cart on my chop saw because sometimes I'm cutting stuff that's long and I need to rotate it this way especially in a shop that doesn't have any room so what I'm gonna do now is the same thing remember I've got to put that just a tad past there like so and this over here is sticking out into the wide open space so I'm gonna to want to make sure that I got something over here to support the other end so it's not doing this kind of thing but all I'm going to do is pop this under here like so, um, make sure everything's right, and bingo, I'm going to blow out four of these real quick.
check that out. Again, this is something if you had the right amount of wood, you could literally blow out. I don't know how many of these an hour, but there you go. And that scarf joint right there will match up uh, the headstock scarf joints as well. So let's get back to the bench. All right, guys, now we need a pencil and our template. And I want to kind of show you here. Uh, this was the neck board. You see, this is cut. So we've got the beveled angle, the thinnest of it facing the furthest away here like this. And then this is the headstock. And these go together like this. Right like that. And that's what gives you your angle. Can you see that? And of course, we've got a lot to do to make it look like this. But I'll show you how to get there. Um, first thing we need to do is find out Where's the center of this? Because the center of this here and here, a lot of center points to match up. So, remember this handy gadget? Well, I can just put it on there and because I've marked that middle spot. I can lay out three strings with this. I can do a number of things with this handy template. But I'm going to go front and back and figure out where the center is here because again I'm gonna have to line stuff up I'm trying to keep my arms out of the way so you can see so all I gotta do is just take some kind of straight edge and go like so it can be a piece of wood can be a square it can be something like that I let that drift over a little bit now I'm gonna go here and I wanna make sure that I'm up here too there we go, that's better. We want to be able to see that. And now, on this one, trust me, this is 90 centimeters or millimeters across. So I'm going to find the 45 mark there, uh, the 45 mark there. You know, I'm going to flip it over. Make sure I'm going to make sure the center marks are everywhere. So I've got them to reference because when it comes time to gluing up and straightening things up, you want to make sure that everything in your world lines up. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this to all four sets where I end up knowing where the center of my world is every time. Alright, so we've got the centers marked on the scarf joints of both the neck boards. See, it's just that simple. I got four of them marked, like so, top and bottom. And then the uh, headstock blanks, same thing. Top and bottom, front and back, all center lines marked off. All right, you see this little notch here? And you see this cut out here. Scarf joint edge. That means that the edge of the scarf joint lines up there. And then you can see that center line that I did up there. I want to make sure that that is right there. Notice I got a lot of slop up here, which I could have made that shorter if I wanted to. Or I can do whatever I want up here. But I really don't want to make sure that that line is cut right here. And then be fighting it later in case something doesn't work out. So I'm going to put that there. Again, I'm going to make sure that that center point is lined up. Now I'm going to just take my pencil and go around here and just follow it all the way down like so. I want to make sure that my lines are really dark. Um, I don't want to use like a, a Sharpie or something that's going to bleed into the wood. That will come back to haunt you later. But you just want to make sure that you're line is marked out really well like so I've got three more of these to do and I'm sure you don't want to see that all right this is number four one two three four didn't I do well going to school anyway now we're gonna go cut these out um, and and this scares a lot of people, but I'm gonna show you something pretty cool I used to use a scroll saw for this and it was okay while it was thin down in here But then it starts flopping all over so I got a new secret weapon All right, I'm gonna take you into the secret area. Do not covet my planer 
my bandsaw, my fret press, my scroll saw, or my belt sander. But anyway, this is the focus of our affection right here. Now, I used to use that scroll saw over there, and it was okay while it was pretty thin here, but what would happen, you get a thicker wood, it starts flopping around, and you're worrying about the blade breaking and all that kind of thing. So, this puppy right here will crank out some work, and let's watch. Hey guys, I have this hooked up to one of these sewing machine paddles, um, so even if the power is on, unless my foot is on the pedal, it's not going to do anything, and I'm a firm believer in that. I've got one of those hooked up into my um, scroll saws, too. But we're just going to cut right outside the edge of this, because when we're shaping these on the belt center, I want that, that, that line there, because it kind of tells me where I'm at. If you don't have that line, then you're lost. But watch this. This puppy eats through wood. You see, I left a little bit of that line there. If you have that line when you're sanding this down later, it's going to show you where you're at. But anyway, I'm going to blow through uh, four of these in a matter of minutes, and I'll catch up with you then. All right, there we go. One, two, three, four, roughed out. And now we're ready to hit the belt sander. Okay, guys, uh, we're at the belt sander. Um, this is a, a, a belt cleaner, and you simply turn this on like so. And it takes all the material that's built up on your belt away. And you want to use that fairly frequently, so that way um, the amount of material showing up on the belt is a good indicator as how the work is getting done. But here's one of our... Um, headstock blanks you can see that there are still lines here so all I'm going to do is I'm going to use those lines as a means of letting me know about where I'm at as I go around as the line gets close to disappearing I'm done of course I want to they don't look level or, or 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 even right now but by the time we get done they will I'm going to cut the camera off so you don't have to listen to the noise and we'll make a separate clip So again, it's just a matter of making the edges of those lines disappear. And I'm going to work the top of this and figure out what I want to do here. I don't usually do that indent, but I'm just going to round this off. I could flatten this off. There are a number of things I can do, but I'm going to get all four of these done and catch back up with you. One, two, three, four. Got that done. I'm going to touch up my belt sander for the next job. There we go. All right, guys. Now we're getting somewhere. I got a knack board laid up here with the slant towards me going down. I've got this flat part here. 
it's going to end up being here. And we need to match up the line where the slant going down starts and where this one ends like so. Now, the problem I've had with gluing stuff up is those wants to stop, move around, and, and God knows what. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and put, I'm going to pop me a little dot right there with my awl. I don't want to hit too hard because it'll split right here. But, I'm going to take, remember that bit I had that matches those dowels? I'm going to drill a hole right there before I do anything else. Now you want to remember that whenever you drill, there's going to be chafe from the other side. So you got to have a file ready. If you got splinters and stuff over here, that neck joint, that scarf joint, is not going to be good. So you want to make sure you got a file handy. Anyway, I'm going to take that like so. I'm not notice I'm not putting any glue on yet. I am just putting two clamps on here. Like so. Now I'm going to hold everything and I'm going to take that one hole. I don't want to drill three holes, just the one and make sure that I go all the way through just like that take my clamps off see that hole is there again I've got those splinters there there's gonna be a lot of sanding going on in the back of this neck by the time we're done but now I'm gonna put a dowel in there and then place my other two all right now we want to remember that this part here is actually going to be covered by the fingerboard. The nut's going to be up in here somewhere. So when it comes to these dowels and the color we want showing, that's going to be down is going to be the most important part. So when we push these through like so, get in there first, slide it down a little bit, and then put it there like so. And then we just push it through see on the bottom it's just barely coming through now you're saying well why aren't you gluing this well we'll do that but I want to make sure that all my dowel holes are where they need to be and everything needs to be lined up so now I'm going to take my handy template again I'm going to, I'm going to recognize that the end of the scarf joint is right there so I don't want these too close to the other one I want to line the center line up and then I'm going to put one there and one there and of course now that I got this one holding everything it's pretty easy just to slide this over like this make sure those dots are lined up and then I get my all and tap that and then just run through Now remember, if this gets in the way, all I got to do is take my trusty flat saw and cut it off and be careful not to cut my fingers off. But you see the stain went all the way through, so that's good. So, making sure everything's lined up again. And you just run that all the way through. Put my dowels through, dry fit those. There you go, look at that. Now what's going to happen is I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to glue this and then I'm going to clamp it. Alright, so last thing I'm going to do is take the surfaces that are going to match each other, run a file over them quick, make sure everything's okay. I don't want them trapped in there. That's going to give me a gap in my scarf joint because when that happens you end up with a problem when something starts getting loose then other stuff starts wiggling back and forth on it and then notice I'm going to get the glue down in the um, the holes where the pegs are going to go tight bond good stuff remember 
these dowels come in really handy because I just push that through where is it it's right there oh there it is look at that it went right through put this one through look at that everything lined up nice and there we go they're all in now I'm just going to take my clamps right here got one there one there and I'm going to wipe this glue off of here and I'll put a final small clamp right there all right got a little glue to wipe up here you notice that there's some of that uh, headstock is sticking out from the side we'll get that sanding done later but everything's lined up real nice and then I'm gonna put this clamp right there and I'm gonna leave this sit overnight it's good to go I got three more to do all right an hour and a half later and I have four necks roughed out with scarf joints done and headstocks glued on as always it's the clamps the lack of clamps that stops us from being millionaires all right guys that's it i feel a lot better about the progress i'm making i got some guitars to blow for festivals coming up one in may a uh, couple are a little later in the year um, and some charities that I always support so those next will get the uh, second board treatment uh, we all know how to do that and I got my fingerboards ready so the, the moral of the story today was try to get some of the stuff that you can get done out of the way and make maximum use of your time because set up and tear down whether you're making one fingerboard uh, or one neck or one headstock is the same whether you're doing one or ten. So if you got a stash of ten, that works out better. Same thing with ordering parts. Um, no supplier likes to uh, spend money on free shipping if you're ordering uh, twenty bucks worth of parts every twice a week. That that don't work out. And then when you start getting into pickups and stuff, especially those flat humbuckers I use, if I buy one of them, the shipping is nearly the same as the is the humbucker itself but if I buy five I can get the same level of shipping and if you're selling these things you can put a little bit more of that in your pocket and get some nice equipment or at least make a profit out of it so that said appreciate you watching and remember T model Ford Pee Wee get your gun I will see you next time